Hi everyone, welcome to another big Aussie Golf Diary video. Today I thought we'd have a chat about golf ranges. So here I am at Hale Golf, here at China Fleet, and here at Plymouth Golf Centre. And I'm here in a very windy West Cornwall Golf Club. Plus, one of some other locations on my little trip around Cornwall and Devon. These are some of the best golf range facilities in the southwest. Here at Hull Golf, they've got 20 bays. And as you can see today, they're massively popular. So whether you use a traditional golf range facility, such as here at Hell Golf, or whether you use a more high tech range, such as here at China Fleet, where they have a uh, top tracer. And uh, I've got the app on my phone, which allows me to keep track of all my scores, not just for practice, but obviously for games. The appeal of all forms of range facilities is growing massively. There was a survey in 2022, I believe, uh, which said uh, three and a half million people have used a golf range of some form in England and Wales over that year. And things just keep getting bigger and bigger. But do you use golf ranges? I know some people uh, who play at West Cornwall have never walked into a golf range in their life. Don't do practice, not interested. There are others who use Hell Golf uh, up near me, again near West Cornwall, and practice regularly. But it's not just about practice for me. Because the golf range, wherever I go, is always a place to meet people. You always find someone on the range to chat to and uh, find out more about how they're getting on in life and their golf and um, see if they're getting lessons, etc. I'm starting some more lessons again with Dan Henderson up at Churston and uh, I know that Dan will always say and every other golf pro out there will say if they give you lessons there's no point in having a lesson if you don't practice in between the next one and that doesn't mean just going on a course and hitting some balls it means actually using a range to work on your swing to work on those techniques to work on those mistakes that you've been trying to change do you do that do you have lessons it's Another question we discussed. A lot of golf range facilities also have teaching professionals. Here at Hell Golf, for example, they have Jamie Crocker and Wayne Graham. Jamie Crocker, you can see, doing a little lesson now. You can purchase individual lessons or blocks of lessons and get taught regularly to improve your game. Now, here at West Cornwall Golf Club, the range or the practice area is just a complete space between the 18th hole and 16th hole. So, don't think that that's detrimental in any way, because it's not. This is real golf. This is golf on grass. Clubs, grass, ball. And next to the course, so it's still pure links. The only detriment you have got to do is you've got to go and collect your ball. And uh, obviously on a range, you don't have to do that. Of course, having a uh, open air golf range with a natural ground uh, is also sometimes a problem. Because uh, I had hoped to include St. Melian in uh, this little bit of footage, but uh, when I arrived, I popped up towards where their main practice area is and was told it was closed. Uh, that was due to the obviously bad weather situation recently, and they hadn't been able to go and cut the grass properly yet. So, fair enough, these things happen. They do have fantastic uh, other areas here, practice areas, but um, I just wanted to show some more of the grass areas. Back to West Cornwall. And yes, I did feel myself hitting a couple of golf balls, but it's so windy out there, and that's the other issue. When you're not protected by um, shelters of any kind, such as you do at a covered driving range, you're open to the elements. So when you're using these golf ranges sometimes, you might get a bit peckish. You're certainly going to get thirsty. At some places, like here at Hell Golf, you can get yourself a cup of coffee or tea. Here at China Fleet, you can order pizzas. And uh, obviously because it's part of a big leisure complex, you can see much of it there, um, you can get food sent over to the range. But at some places, you can get a Costa coffee. Yeah, here at Plymouth Golf Centre, they have a Costa coffee shop. A number of these golf ranges are also diversifying into all manner of things. Here at Hell Golf, they not only have the range, but they also have a 12 hole golf course with par threes and a couple of par fours. Oh, that's lovely. Show my point of you a bit left. You should you stay where you were and I've been writing the flag, haven't I? <laughs> and this could be used by everyone, regardless of your age or ability. Plus, they also have one of the best short game 
practice areas in Cornwall, if not the southwest, and it's used by professionals and coaches and visitors all year round. At China Fleet, they have the Woodland Park Adventure Area, great for all the family, and a little cafe. Over at Plymouth Golf Centre, they not only have Costa Coffee, but they've also got football golf. Many of them will have shops selling golf equipment. This could be a high street name, such as American Golf, based at Plymouth Golf Centre, right through to the personal approach of pro shops, and like here at Hell Golf, where you can try out new equipment and also purchase second-hand equipment when available. Remember to talk to the people that know, because there is always a price and a budget for everyone out there. So lots of different facilities to keep everyone happy, whether you're a professional golfer, serious golfer, or just a beginner, or just friends and family, or even for just people coming down for a cup of coffee and a chat. So this is Plymouth Golf Centre in Plymouth, as you would guess. Uh, they've got the Trackman system as opposed to uh, China Fleet, which has the uh, Top Tracer system. Very similar. I, I guess most of us would know Trackman because we get fitted on things like Trackman. Um, so a lot of the system is the same. Just been uh, watching a gentleman called Pete. A bit further up here is actually using the system to play a couple of holes today. Normally we just use it for uh, checking distances, etc., which is what Trackman's always about. But he's playing kind of the game today, the simulator system been stuck in the trees quite a bit and I must say that is part of the problem with watching a screen and then trying to visualize out there in the same way as any other place would be kind of working out how to get past trees because you keep hitting them when you can't see them it's one of those kind of technical issues that you get but it's still fun it's still fun and he avoided the water on the next next hole far off are you Oh. Don't tell me trees. In trees again. That, that was still a very good shot though. So better. A lot of these kind of ranges, they have games added to them. They have little extra pieces added to them because of the screens and things. I think they're designed really to bring in a whole new generation of people that might get into golf in some form or another. You've only got to think, you know, I'm 58 and I'm computer literate obviously for doing all this. But I know a lot of people of a certain age have no idea about computers, no idea about Playstations and Xboxes and all those kind of things. But for a lot of people, they grew up with all that kind of thing. They grew up with screens. They grew up using, utilizing screens all the time. So having facilities like this, this one at China Fleet and uh, other ones at uh, Plymouth Golf Center, etc., it's just adding a new extension to their way of life but also gives them a familiarity with what they already do in their lives. So maybe this is the way forward for golf. Or is it? I will say that one of the Buccaneers, Darren Sturman, Sturminator on our channel, uh, he has been regularly seen here at the Plymouth Golf Centre, often spending all day hitting hundreds and hundreds of golf balls. Are you the kind of person that will do that? Spend very long sessions? at a golf range? Or do you just specifically go down and practice, say, some chipping or whatever for like 30, 40 balls and go home? So many different variations of how you can make use of a golf range. And I think maybe that's what the popularity is nowadays. Today I've seen people just practicing properly. I've seen a whole gang of children with their teachers, etc., uh, having a go, having some fun with disabled people taking part. Access for everyone. That's what golf ranges are about. Irrespective of however the technology is or whether it's a traditional place. What would you like at your ideal golf range? Do you feel that uh, you want all these kind of bells and whistles things going on? You want a fancy cafe? You like a bar to uh, obviously buy a few drinks, etc.? Or do you just want a place for a bit of quiet where you can concentrate on what you're doing? Should some of these locations have like a fun side, fun area with maybe fancy screens, etc., and a more specific practice area for people who just want to come and concentrate on what they're doing? That's an interesting question, isn't it? Because quite often, uh, especially if I'm filming, I will ask if any people in the area mind if I'm talking whilst they're practicing, um, or I will try and find a quiet area. T today, obviously, at Plymouth Golf Centre, that's packed. That wasn't going to happen. 
different kind of group of people, maybe a different kind of time in the day. Um, but just one of those things to think about. I know one of the buccaneers said that he's often asked uh, people at Hell Golf if they could simply just put up some mirrors. Uh, that's an old-fashioned thing. I remember um, I had a lesson many, many years ago. I won a lesson. Honestly, I did years ago before I really got into golf. And a pair of golf shoes. You never see them again uh, with metal spikes. And I had the lesson at uh, Noel, Noel Golf Club in Bristol. And um, it was with uh, a very well-known um, golf coach at the time, to be honest. Uh, Gordon Brand, I believe. The actual senior, Gordon Brand. And he had a room that was full of mirrors. The idea being you can obviously check your swing as you're swinging or your positions and all those kind of things. You know, check where the head of the club is, that sort of stuff. So all these kind of fancy screens and things whilst they show you technical details, don't necessarily show you the simple basics that you need. Also, cost. Obviously, it's um, a slightly more expensive or a little bit more expensive, maybe, at some part in some parts of the country, a lot more expensive to use one of the places with fancy, super-duper entertainment systems. Um, you've got to kind of probably guess, if you're a business, budget for the area or work out your ideas for the area. Would... Uh, how golf benefit from having a fancy super duper system? I don't know. It has to be said that the technology and the equipment for these top golf and track man facilities is a massive outlay, and these costs have to be taken into account. So what do you do? You could, for example, charge more for people to use the technology side of things than if they are just hitting normal golf balls. But I do wonder how many people, if given the option, would make a decision to use it all the time. Now, you could simply increase the price of the golf ball higher. That covers the costs for everyone. Now, China Fleet have done this, and um, they did have some concerns there from members of the golf club, because China Fleet is a golf club as well as a golf range and leisure facility. Some of the members just wanted to simply have, say, 20 balls to go and warm up before they went and played on the course. So they've done them a little members deal where you can simply do that, and that's great. You have to work around the people that come to your facility, whether they be members or just visitors. Just as a little bit of randomness, as it's not really supposed to be on this video, but I was just passing the area, I'm at Ivy Bridge, or Dinnerton, as some people call it, I'm at Ivy Bridge Golf Club. Just bumped into a well-known character on YouTube now, Dan Hendrickson's brother, Paul, who uh, looks after this place. And um, I'm gonna come down in a few weeks time, a couple of weeks time, and uh, give it a go. Let them uh, get a few things sorted, because like most courses right now, they're just dealing with the ravages of the weather. Still, let's get back on the ranges. So, on my way back from Devon, I thought I would take a slight detour and end up here at St. Austell. Reason being, they've got a lovely golf range here, okay? And not really to discuss their range per se, but more about the fact that some golf courses do have their own ranges. It's not always about a specifically designed golf range, as is, uh, I guess, Hell Golf and um, Plymouth Golf Centre, etc. Sometimes you get golf courses with decent ranges. The ravages of the weather have um, hit the uh, grass areas, but that's expected at the moment. And uh, I must admit, even when I spoke to the people at China Fleet, they had a similar problem but you are under shelter and it's very nice. The issues you do get at some of these places though is that you can be a bit limited to what you can do. Not here, they've got a lovely big open space. But when I was at St Q the other day, remember that one on the video, they had a, let's say, well-used, well-worn little golf range. But I did meet a couple of people there. One of them was a member at Bowood. Now I love Bowood Park. They've got a golf range, but he went to St Q, as beaten up and old as it was, because at Boatwood, they are limited to only using irons. So golf courses, golf clubs do have ranges, but sometimes they can be a bit limited in what you can do. So what's important for you for a golf range? Do you want 
some kind of ranger where you can just blast the driver out there as far as possible or you just need somewhere that's close location wise so you can go practice whilst i was here at st Austell, it got me thinking about well the fact that some golf courses don't have much in the line of practice facilities be it uh, an open area like uh, the likes of west cornwall or new key or or a range like here some of them don't have very much at all and maybe that's one reason why some places are crying out for new ranges there has been a press report to say that at falmouth at falmouth not at falmouth golf club but at falmouth in the, the town or just down the road from Falmouth Golf Club at the Pitch and Putt, the people that own that want to set up a full-blooded driving range. And there's been a lot of discussion in the press. Some people want it, some people don't want it. The reason I think some don't want it is because uh, they will have to create very large fences um, and nets, etc., which might spoil the landscape. But to be honest, it would be brilliant to have a, a proper range whether it's associated with or not with Falmouth Golf Club. Some courses just don't have the space uh, to create things or even the finances to create one. But golf ranges, if they're utilised properly, surely they will end up being an investment for the club. Remember when uh, Kilio, remember Kilio? Such a shame that place closed down. But that wasn't to do with the golf range. The golf range was small, but very popular. We, we filmed it quite a lot when I used to do stuff with Matt Tucknut. So it's one of those things that golf ranges are just popular. They're popular for lots of reasons. So in conclusion, what do you think about golf ranges? For me, I just love the places, whether it be getting an opportunity to try out new equipment, practicing the lessons that I've had or not practicing enough and trying to remember the things I've actually forgotten en route, or simply just meeting friends, or just relaxing, chilling out for a while, catching up with the gossip, and uh, just being part of the golf scene, and you're not always on a golf course. So that's it for today. Thank you very much to all the people who have allowed me to come and film today on my little trip around part of Devon and some of Cornwall. Thank you very much to China Fleet, to the Plymouth Golf Centre, to West Cornwall Golf Club, to St Austell Golf Club and also especially here to Hell Golf, my local fantastic driving range facility. Please make comments below, please get involved in what we do here on uh, Big Eye Golf and if you're liking these diaries let me know. What else would you like me to go and find out about or discuss in the Big Eye Golf Diary? Also please subscribe, we're getting close to 5,000 followers now, just love you to be part of that and get your friends to join. Bye everybody, speak soon on another adventure and wherever you go and play golf enjoy yourselves and have fun